Are you a fan of mashing? Do you like spamming dodge to avoid basically every attack? Well, do I have a character for you, because today we are covering Lancelot. Lancelot is a character who excels at sticking to enemies and constantly outputting consistent damage while having some of the best tools in the game to avoid taking damage, and also comes with one of the best utility moves in the game with Freeze. This makes him a very strong character worth bringing to any team composition, and dare I say it, he is very fun. Just like almost every character in the game. In this video, I want to discuss Lancelot, discuss general playstyle and setup, talk about some strengths and weaknesses, and showcase some, uh, interesting use in harder raid fights. As per usual, I do plan to cover every character and may make a few additional guides on top of that, so if you enjoy guide content on this game, RPGs in general, and especially Xenoblade, and are interested in seeing more, please be sure to subscribe to the channel because it does help me out so much. Let's get into it. So a lot of the most important ways to get damage out of Lancelot doesn't even come from your gameplay, but from your settings. Essentially, Lancelot's basic combo turns into a flurry attack that can be spammed infinitely if you continue pressing the normal attack button, which is bound to X for me, and essentially this attack is so fast that it is affected by both FPS and mashing. That's right, essentially this attack does less damage if you play on a lower FPS value. If you compare 30 frames to 120 frames per second, you can see a very clear difference in damage, meaning that ideally if you main Lancelot, you want to be playing at 120 FPS or whatever the max is on console. Especially because this flurry attack is actually a pretty big source of his damage. This attack is also affected by your mashing speed. If you mash faster, you get more damage, and this seems to cap out at around 6 to 8 inputs a second from what I can tell. That's decently high and can be very intensive, so honestly, as much fun as it is to joke about mashing, if you plan to play this character, turn on turbo. If you are playing on Steam, take 10 seconds to go to your controller settings, edit layout, click the gear next to your attack button, and select the icon. Your hands and your controller will both thank you because you can just hold down the button and get the full benefit of this, which is going to be much better. There isn't some arbitrary high ground here for playing authentically, I don't care if you call me a cheater, just save your hands and do it. It'll be a lot better in the long term. So now that we have established that you can get more damage just from changing some settings, let's get into the rest of this. Lancelot's kit actually isn't too complex. His support skills grant him extra damage with rapid attacks. This skill is effectively worthless when you have an optimized setup, since the cap on his flurry is actually really easy to reach, and the extra damage from the ice does not actually add any additional damage or go over the cap. Though honestly, it probably should, and I wouldn't be surprised if a patch changes that, but for now, this actually doesn't matter much. His second support skill kind of forms his identity as a character, Werblewind. This allows him to use a perfect dodge by pressing what is normally the combo finisher button, along with holding the stick in a direction. This functions as both a dodge and an attack at the same time, meaning you can still get some attacks off as you are dodging, which is something other characters cannot do. Furthermore, this can be basically spammed infinitely, meaning no limitations of count like dodge has. You can use this mid-flurry to continue your flurry afterwards, you can use this while not even next to an enemy to gap close, you can spin around an enemy, you can kite backwards. This dodge is actually a really nice ability to have. It's the main thing that can allow you to stick to enemies and kind of spam invincibility also. The combo finisher is also routed to this button if you don't hold a direction, and using that at the exact moment an attack is about to hit will give an invincibility also, meaning you have ways of dodging almost every attack in the game and while outputting a lot of damage. Lancelot's gameplay look was going to rely on using these flurries and his combo finishers as much as possible and using lower cooldown skills to get back to his flurry if able. And then of course in coordinated team play, using your freeze to help skip phases of fights because it's a pretty broken status. I'd say he's one of the most straightforward characters in the game, but if you aren't running a funny setup that I will show off, it will test your ability to perfectly time dodges to get the most out of him and his damage. So let's get into setup, because there is a lot of stuff to talk about here. So, as you can probably tell from the very first sigil, I have a very interesting setup for you today. If you want to know how I did the 60 second score attack at the beginning of the video, just replace flight over fight with glass cannon, replace life on the line with another supplementary damage 5, and replace combo booster with a little bit extra critical hit rate to make sure you're getting that 100% value. As far as the weapon I am running, I am using the Terminus weapon, which is pretty obvious here. It gives you the best bonus traits in the entire game. Catastrophe is just awesome with its 100% damage cap increase, 50% attack bonus when your health is below 45,000. Very good effect to have. Sigil Booster is also fantastic when it's maxed out to make sure you're getting an extra trait level on everything. And the extra 5 levels of damage cap are great. Now, if you do not have this, if you haven't gotten that drop rate yet, using the crit rate weapon will work just fine. And the max ascended weapon will work as well. Now, the Shining Star of the build today is this Flight Over Fight Sigil. Now, normally I would not recommend running this because of the attack minus 50%, but that doesn't actually matter too much on Lancelot because he's still able to hit damage caps fairly easy anyway, thanks to just stacking a couple extra attack boosters since his damage caps aren't the highest anyway. 
Now, this makes all of your dodges perfect dodges, and this affects his special dodge, which you can basically spam infinitely. Now, this is really, really broken, as you might imagine, because you're basically always able to perfect dodge everything and get that invincibility bonus out of it. And this combines perfectly with the sub-trait of Nimble Onslaught, which you can also add as a sub-trait on other things if you don't have, do not have it on your flight over fight, which is probably not to be expected. Apparently, this is just a really good schedule that's been sitting in my inventory a while, which is really nice, honestly. This gives an extra three seconds of invincibility every time you perfect dodge, which is really broken with Lancelot. And it also has the added benefit of extra skill cooldown and extra SBA gains, which is also really nice because that allows you to use your skills even more often and you can use SBA even more often as well. So all in all, this is a really, really good sigil on Lancelot because it allows you to basically perfect dodge everything and get a lot of benefit out of perfect dodging. And you can basically spam it with no drawback thanks to his special perf perfect dodge on his that also attacks at the same time while you're doing it. So just so much benefit out of this, which is awesome. Then I'm running War Elemental. This bypasses the damage cap for an additional 20% damage boost. Really nice to have on basically everyone, and it affects most enemies in the game, which is super nice. Then I'm running my Obligatory 4 damage cap 5 pluses. This is really nice to have. I've got some levels of quick cooldown on these, which allows your arts to come out, or skills to come out even sooner, so you're able to use them more often. I'm running a level of Cascade, so we get some extra skill cooldown out of that as well, and then I'm running one level of Uplift also to increase the SBA gain even further. Now, if you can fit three quick cooldowns that would be more advisable most likely but i was not able to do that with this current build i normally would maybe run a link together that has my quick cooldown on it to get a uh, level 45 on that maybe replaces another supplementary damage with that but i kind of wanted to do as much damage as possible and uh for the fight i was doing i wanted to get as much damage as i could anyway i am also running a life on the line here normally i would not be running this as a sub trait but i needed some extra damage to make sure i'm hitting the caps with the flight over fight negative effect this is where my other Nimble Onslaught is coming from to make sure I'm hitting the maximum level of that to get all the benefit out of that as that I can. Life on the line means that you don't get any healing from allies, but it doesn't really matter when you're always invincible anyway if you play it right. So there's basically no negative to this as well. You'll also notice I'm not running Potion Master this time around, or Potion Hoarder, because I plan to be invincible when I fight, so it doesn't even matter. Then I have my Supplementary Damage 5s. These are a really good effect. It's just a 74% chance to trigger an extra 20% damage roll. Really nice to have. Pretty good to deal as much damage as possible. Combo Booster is really good on Lancelot because of how fast he attacks and how often he attacks. You can stack it up really, really quickly. This also gives me a level of Guts if I do mess up. Because uh, having Guts is nice. Just make sure you live with 1 HP just one time, no matter what. It activates every 2.5 minutes. And with the base amount of potions, you shouldn't be needing any more than that any that often anyway. And uh, Combo Booster gives you 72% damage boost when it ramps up to max, which is really easy to do as Lancelot, so that's a really big damage increase when you're able to stack it up, which is really nice. And then I have my Critical Hit Rate 5 Pluses that have Stamina and Tyranny on them. This gives me as much Critical Hit Rate as I possibly can get, which is 96%, without some extra Overmasteries to hit 100%, unfortunately. And uh, this is awesome. It's tyranny gives another 36% attack boost. The max HP drop doesn't matter because we're invincible most of the time. And then Stamina, since we're invincible most of the time, it's easy to stay at 100%. That's a free 51% attack boost as well. This can ensure we're basically hitting damage caps no matter what with the, what with the attack boost that we have. So even with the negative effect from Flight Over Fight, it doesn't even matter. And we have a bunch of skill cooldown with everything we have as well. We've got some nice levels and everything. This is a pretty solid setup for the uh, build I want to show off here. Now, if you want to do a more general setup with the character, replace the Flight Over Fight. Make sure you've got a link together up that's a really good effect to have um you might want to run auto revive just in case you're not good with uh, perfect dodges if you don't have the bonus from flight over fight you may want to run some aegis as well to give you some extra max hp you may want to run uh potion hoarder obviously you definitely want to run potion hoarder if you're not planning to use flight over fight that's one of the best sub traits in the game I apologize, I almost forgot to mention this but uh why am I not running Lancelot's unique sigils well that's because both of them are kind of bad honestly so we got Right Dragon's Oath. This boosts the damage and distance covered by Twin Blade Dance. This is okay. This is just his unique dodge ability. This is all right. And the movement option can be nice, but you don't really need this to hit cap on it. And uh, you don't really need the movement range either, honestly, unless you're just trying to gap close. But you can just do that with one of your other abilities. So this isn't really that useful. And then White Dragon's Glory. This is just a worse combo booster. I'm not kidding. It boosts the damage of each successive hit. And if you don't make another hit within 2.5 seconds, it resets, but it only boosts damage a maximum of 50%. Combo booster, only one level, boosts damage by a max of 72%. And it stacks up even faster as well. So this, this ability just sucks. It's 
really unfortunate. I guess you could stack both at the same time, but you don't really need it to hit damage caps. It's better to run other damage boosters. So, uh, yeah, I don't really recommend running these in most situations, unfortunately. I think that covers it for the Sigil setup. Let's take a look at his skills now. So Lancelot has a lot of interesting skills that you might want to change or use depending on the situation. Blade Impulse is probably a skill I would always recommend running. This is just a fast lunge attack that is one of your major gap closers, and it also chains immediately into your flurry combo, which is really nice. Now, some of these arts or skills are really hard to pronounce, so I really apologize when I butcher them. Luftspiegelung. Now, this is a really nice skill because it's basically kind of your safety net if you're running the flight over fight, or even just in general, really. It's a really nice skill to have. It's a... Uh, Basically, mirror image, it's like Ghost Walker. It basically makes damage is nullified for a set amount of hits, so if you get hit, you're able to nullify that, which is really nice to have. It has a pretty long duration if it doesn't get immediately used up, which is pretty nice. So this is something you might want to run with Flight Over Fight just to ensure you're not getting hit basically at all. And if you're able to kind of trigger those Nimble Onslaught cooldown reductions, you're able to have this up really often, which is also really nice. And then we have Southern Cross. This is a fast multi-hit attack that's also chainable into your flurry combo. This is probably your highest damage skill overall. It's a pretty nice skill to have sometimes, although you may not be able to fit it in depending on what kind of set you are running. But it is a really nice skill, especially if you're doing uh, certain fights and certain challenges. And then we have Blauer Dulk. I apologize for that. I know that was butchered. This just grants a free 20% supplementary damage to Lancelot. It stacks with the supplementary damage that comes from your uh, sigils, so it gets to 40% supplementary damage total when this is active, so that's also really nice to have. Just a really nice buff. It lasts for a pretty long time. You get a lot of benefit out of this while it is active and you're able to attack. Just a free 20% free damage boost, essentially, which is really nice. And then, of course, the other skills. We have Kaltzwinger. If you are in any kind of coordinated team play, bring this. Glaciate, your freeze ability, one of the absolute best abilities in the entire game. It's one of the absolute best crowd control abilities to stun enemies, skip phases and fights if you're able to activate it at the right time to kind of stop enemies from doing what they were about to do. This is a fantastic ability. Most of the time you should be running this no matter what, but in certain setups you may want to run more damage. If you're, if you're playing by yourself, you may not want to bring this, but in coordinated team play, bring this. It's a fantastic ability. Do not bound it to your X key, though, or your normal attack key, especially if you have turbo on, because otherwise you won't be able to hold it down and get the full benefit of it. Make sure it's bound to one of the other buttons. And then we have Lawen Stern. Lawen Nen Stern, sorry. Uh, this is essentially a projectile attack that you're able to kind of attack from across the field with. Uh, you can activate it multiple times in a row. It does okay damage. It's all right as a ranged option, but I wouldn't recommend running this most of the time since you have so many gap closers and ways to stick to the enemy anyway. And then we have Turbulence. This is a dodge attack that goes into the air. You already have plenty of those, so that doesn't really matter too much. And then slams down with an area effect that's chainable into your combo as well. This is okay, but outside of a uh, score attack, 60 seconds, I don't really recommend running this because uh, there's just better options than most coordinated team play. And then we have Schwertgeist. Uh, this ability sucks. It just distributes your SBA gauge. You don't really want to do this. It doesn't really offer anything besides that. You, you don't need this. Don't run this. So that covers his skills. For a general play, you probably want to run something like this along with his freeze ability. Maybe replace uh, Southern Cross that has kind of a long cooldown and you don't really need the damage of it that badly, but uh, if you trust yourself, you may not need Mirror Image, so that could be something to replace as well with a Glaciate, but otherwise stick to those five skills mostly. As far as Overmasteries, ideally you'll get some crit rate on top of this, but skill damage cap up, normal attack damage cap up are some of the most important traits in the entire game to increase your damage even further. I've also got Skybound Art damage up and Skybound Art damage cap up, which is the main reason I kept this, because so I was like, well, it gives me some free damage on that, so I might as well keep it, especially since 96% crit rate is decent enough anyway. You're still hitting it 96% of the time, so that's nice to have. Stun power could be something else could, that could be useful, but otherwise you'll probably want to stick to normal attack up, skill damage cap up, crit rate up, and make sure you're hitting 100% if you can. That should cover it for a general setup-related information. Let's take a look at some gameplay now, and uh, do I have a very interesting thing to show you today? So, solos of these two aren't exactly super rare on YouTube since people consider it like the hardest challenge and a lot of people like showing off their skill at the game, but I bet you've never seen one where you don't get hit a single time. Or maybe you have, I don't know. But regardless, this is one of the funniest challenges in the entire game with this build because you can just completely trivialize it by uh, using Mirror Image and uh, immediately just kind of uh, spamming your dodge attack. So the Mirror Image kind of covers yourself if you're not able to get a perfect dodge at like a perfect time, but otherwise anytime your invincibility is about to run out you can use your... Uh, dodge abilities to immediately get it back, which is uh, really, really funny. You can just spam it. You can just spam your dodge ability anytime that it is uh, 
your invincibility is off cooldown. Otherwise, you're going to want to be attacking with your other abilities, but when you are close to uh, losing your invincibility, make sure you're spamming that dodge and you should be good. Or if you can time it properly, you can use your finisher attack as well, your combo finisher. So, uh... My setup for this, I was actually missing a damage cap because I forgot to equip it. I accidentally unequipped it for something and forgot to equip it back, so I only had three for this one as opposed to the four, but even despite that, I was still able to kind of easily handle this mission regardless, and uh, like I said, I don't get hit like a single time. I'm not going to show the entire fight because unfortunately, uh, Maggie all takes forever for me to kill after I get rid of Galanza, but you can kind of get the idea here, and uh, I might upload like a better run of this eventually where I actually have the damage cap and I can get more stun power if I can to uh, deal with Maggie Elmore, because uh, she is really annoying without stun power with her stupid shield. But you can kind of see that I'm able to take out Galanza and just kind of ignore Maggie El extremely quickly, and uh, while ignoring basically every kind of damage mechanic in the fight by spamming the uh, dodge basically at all times, and while... The only other strategy here is just keeping Mirror Image up, because uh, that just gives yourself a little bit of cover if you're unable to land the uh, dodges, if you're at, or if you get caught by an attack at a really bad time. Like, you're still not perfectly invincible during this, because there is a couple frames of vulnerability between dodges, but, uh... So that's kind of what the mirror image is for, and why you want to use it every time it's up. And also what Nimble Onslaught allows you to do, it allows you to keep mirror image up basically all the time, which is really nice. But otherwise, it's just spamming invincibility and just going ham on him, which is, uh... Really, really, it's honestly not that hard to do. Like, this is much freer than you think. It's... Honestly, I'm not going to say no skill, because it does take a little bit of skill to kind of optimize your damage and uh, make sure you're not just mindlessly pressing the dodge button all the time, since you want to kind of make sure you're at least doing some level of damage to them, but it's really, really not that hard to do. So I'm going to show to at least the end of Galanza, and then the actual end of the fight against uh, Magiel as well, but uh, I'm not going to show the full thing like I said. In this phase, I'm just kind of mindlessly spamming the dodge ability, because why not? It's not like you get punished for it, and I can't actually attack him in this phase anyway. And, uh... Yeah, it's it's pretty easy to time and to dodge attacks with uh, the guaranteed invincibility on any kind of dodge, honestly. So, some attacks I do wait to make sure I get that invincibility off on, and, and I'm just trying to weave in my Blade Impulse to Gap Close and my uh, Perfect Cross when I have a moment to do that. Now, if you're in coordinated team play, you can still use this build, but I would recommend uh, running the Glaciate. Like I said, it's just a really good status effect to have. I do not have it here. I'm trying to time my SBAs in a way where I can uh, get a lot of benefit out of them as well. Now, if you were, if I was really good at the game, I would have been able to hit Magiel with the SBA as well by kind of going over to her. That I think that breaks her stun as, or her shield as well, so I probably should have used my SBAs on her like exclusively or tried to hit both of them with it, but uh, I was just kind of focused on getting the footage for this video. Like I said, I do not have uh, all my damage caps equipped, so I'm doing less damage than I could be as well, so you could do this even faster than I am here, and... Uh, I don't know, I might I might end up uploading my own solo of this where I actually do have everything equipped and I have, like, some better sub-traits and some more stun damage so I can actually kind of show off the real potential of this kind of set. But, uh, even still, you can just kind of see how simple this is. Like, as long as you keep track of your invincibility, uh, one thing to mention about invincibility is sources of invincibility do not stack, so even if you have multiple things that extend your invincibility, uh, it seems to cap out at 6 seconds regardless about, so that's something to keep in mind as well. But otherwise, it's still really, really simple to uh, keep up your invincibility and just kind of spam attacks otherwise. And uh, the uh, Nimble Onslaught also allows me to keep up supplementary damage more often, allows me to use my other skills more often, so I'm getting a lot of benefit out of that as well. Nimble Onslaught is actually really nice for that. You get more SBA as well. So... This is just a... Uh, I hate to say free, but... With how hard this might have been the first time you've done it, I'm sure this probably looks a little uh, trivial now. Which is kind of this the strength of this specific build. And uh, honestly, it's kind of fun at the same time. I would not say it takes a lot of skill to do, like I said, but it is pretty fun. So, uh, got to deal with another Silver Veil Storm. Not really a big deal. And then uh, after that, I'll be able to take him out. And uh, then Maggie, like I said, takes like another 10 plus minutes just because of me not being able to break her shield as effectively and her continuing to run away. So if I did this again, I'd want to figure out how to optimize that a little bit further. But not really a huge deal. It, it, this still showcases the potential of the build, I think, pretty well. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else to mention about his gameplay. Honestly, like I said, it's honestly really straightforward. Um, I think maybe if I had Glaciate, there'd be more moments of free time I'd be able to maybe... Uh, 
hit Maggie all a bit more as well, because I'd be able to use Glaciate on her to uh, freeze her during uh, certain moments when I actually have a free opportunity to fight her. And, uh... Yeah! I'm getting all the benefit out of Stamina and Tyranny here, because I'm not getting hit. I don't need Potion Hoarder, because I'm not getting hit. Don't need the extra max HP from Aegis, because I'm not getting hit. Because, uh... Really funny, honestly. I can't believe this is possible. I'm sure you can do this kind of build with other characters, but they might have a harder time hitting the caps, and they don't have as much of a spammable dodge as this. Even if you run a improved dodge, you still only get 7 max, so you just have to be a little bit more careful, but you could probably at least do something similar. I wouldn't be surprised if that's one of the prevalent strategies here to uh, solo this challenge, honestly, because even with a missing damage cap, I've already uh, kind of annihilated him. I'm going to destroy him in less than 5 minutes here, which is really, really funny. Honestly, there's not too much else to say. Uh, like I said, he has a pretty straightforward gameplay loop, even if he has a really funny options here to be invincible all the time. It's not too much effort as long as you are careful about uh, using your mirror image when it is uh, not up, uh, careful about making sure you dodge at the right time and everything like that. It's not too much effort. So uh, After taking out Galanza, I take out Maggie all the same way, and it's really... Prettiest simple fight, honestly, and now you can see that she took like 11 minutes longer after I'd already killed Galanza, so if I did this again, like I said, I'd want to uh, make sure I figure out a way to optimize that part, because uh, that was uh, not ideal. Didn't even get to clear within 15 minutes bonus in the top right, unfortunately, which is really sad. But I do think that about covers it for this video. There's really not too much else to say here. It's uh, pretty fun, at the very least. I do have a lot of fun playing him. I do think the... Uh, Strategy is really cool at the same time, but that should cover it. I hope you guys learned something from watching, and if you did, please be sure to like, comment, subscribe. Look forward to all my future guide content on all the rest of characters since I do plan to cover them all. Please let me know any feedback and how I can improve these guides even further. I would greatly appreciate it. So once again, thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful and blessed day, and hopefully I will see you back here soon.